I'd like to call the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, January 21st, 2020 to order. First order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Charlie, would you like to speak? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
obtain the signature of the first selectman, I believe, on this contract. Also with us today is Tom Cruis, who's the executive director of NeighborWorks. Uh, Dave Purvis, who's their lawyer, who worked uh, with uh, Steve and Pam in developing this agreement, and also uh, Andrew Martelli, also from NeighborWorks, who's uh, part of their staff. Uh, all of these resources are here today uh, to help us discuss this project further and uh, uh, most importantly answer any questions that you might have. I think you're all familiar with this project, but I don't need to go into any of the uh, the, the details, I don't think, in terms of what it is we're talking about doing here. Uh, but uh, to put it in a nutshell, it's a partnership between the town and NeighborWorks to uh, create uh, affordable housing on the Woodruff property. Uh, we've we've uh, been through several uh, plan phases in developing uh, the concept for a really terrific project. And uh, I think, the, as Matt alluded to, the public meeting the other night, uh, illustrated a lot of support for the project, demonstrated a lot of support for the project, and uh, it looks very promising. There's a lot of steps to go forward with this yet, as Sandy alluded to, but um, this is a really significant date um, in, in the history of this project. Steve's here primarily as a resource uh, to answer any questions that you might have or maybe give you a, a quick overview of the contract. Uh, with NeighborWorks, uh, so I'll turn it over to Steve, and he can say whatever he needs to, and then uh, hopefully you will get your endorsement of all this. That's great. Um, Steve, I want to thank you for providing us with the what I refer to as the Reader's Digest. Oh, you got the draft. Yes. Okay, yeah, good. Very we did get that in time. Uh, as there was one thing Pam actually mentioned to me. Mm -hmm. I mistakenly indicated that you weren't going to be able to execute until you finish the process That's after cool. town meeting. I uh, my understanding is after today you can do that. That's <laughs> one correction I would make. That's right. That's fine. If you want to just walk us, I think you, you did a, a, I think, a very good job of breaking this into four or five or six uh, uh, specific sections in terms of highlights. So, so I'll try to take the Reader's yeah. Digest and turn it into a classic comic, <laughs> and we'll see if we exactly. can go and, from and there. And again, this is a, just another opportunity to share it with our community. Um, you never have uh, too many opportunities to do that. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, for Selectman. It's a pleasure to be here, an honor to be here before all of you. Um, it's a fairly simple real estate transaction. We're going to be transferring some land that is owned by the town um, that you have been looking at, as uh, the chair of the committee indicated, for the past four years. Um, we, we're, we don't have a final description. If, if you look at the agreement you're going to sign today, hopefully, Mr. First Selectman, um, th there isn't a final um, d uh, description because there are several things that have to be done. We probably have to have a survey, and we have to cut off uh, uh, the parcel that is uh, leased to the Guilford Center for Children. There's a park parcel that I think is possibly part of the uh, land, and we're going to have a utility easement that's going to go across the land. Uh, there's one other issue that has come up, and we had spent a fair amount of time negotiating it, but there had been some <laughs> environmental issues on part of the property. And, and Dave Purvis and I and Pam were going through some painstaking efforts to try to define what the appropriate uh, part of the land was that we might retain as a town, but we decided let's just wait till they do their due diligence, their environmental due diligence. The due diligence, uh, the environmental reports we are looking at are almost 20 years old, 15, 20 years old, and so they um, have an environmental contingency and they have to do this before July 1 of this year. So um, the hope is that we will know at that time whether or not uh, they will take the entire parcel minus the um, portions I talked about, or whether we have to negotiate um, a modified um, transfer so that we retain um, the, the environmentally uh, challenged portion of the property and, and they get the clean portion of the property. Um, and so we may be back. Uh, there's no need to go back because you authorized us to do that, and we would file a modified DLDA on the land records um, as a result. Um, so that the, the contingencies are the normal contingencies that you have in most real estate transactions, and um, most of those will run through the end of this year. The finance contingency is going to run through the end of next year. Uh, that is a long time out, um, but my understanding is that um, uh, I think the first selectman members of the body will know that the budget is challenged at the state of Connecticut right now, and I believe the Department of Housing funds are not appropriated. Perhaps there will be some funds appropriated this year uh, or next year, 
And uh, as soon as they are appropriated and uh, uh, our partners are able to go there, they will get their financing and we will move forward. So the December, um, the, the end of December of 2022, uh, 20, uh, or 21 rather, is, uh, is the outside date for their financial contingency. Our hope is, and, and I, if they want to speak to this, um, I'm sure they would agree, the hope is that we'll get the financing sooner and we'll be able to get the project off the ground sooner. Um, and um, and I think that's those are pretty much the major issues. What, from the protection of the city's perspective, of the town's perspective, um, we are very careful in the, both the RFP process and then ultimately in the contract to identify the key personnel uh, that are part of this uh, project. And so it's really an important part of the project that the people who are, are, are identified as the architect, as the people who are going to be in the field for the developer, um, uh, that those people will be in there and they're named in the contract. Uh, and if they have to make a change in key personnel, they will have to come back uh, to the first selectman uh, for approval of any modifications and prove that the replacement personnel are is as um, uh, <coughs> uh, critical to the project as the person that is being replaced. Mm -hmm. So. That's and does that extend to the ownership period and the management of the project once it's completed? I There's mean, no restriction on there. After they take ownership, they own mm -hmm. the property, and, and, mm -hmm. and they, uh, there's no time frame where in which they need to remain um, as the uh, owners of the property once the certificate of completion is. They have the ability to, to dispose of the property at mm -hmm. some point. Mm -hmm. Is that some risk to, to the town or in terms of protecting the interests of the taxpayers? Is that a concern for us? They will have to, whoever replaces goes in their shoes and has to uh, honor the obligations of the DLDA. The DLDA will be on the land records and okay. the provisions that govern the operation will be um, preserved. It's so it has to remain yeah. for that purpose. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Other questions? That's a good question. Yeah. I was wondering about the promissory note. There's a very specific amount, 299, 395. And I was wondering why that mechanism even needs to happen. Um, and and if it's something that's necessary, you know, clearly that's not the value of the property. So why why that number? I would defer to the committee because that was something that the committee had uh, come up with uh, that number, I believe. I believe that's the assessed value. Yeah. yeah. That's the assessed yeah. value. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Assessed value of the property. Okay. We, I mean, if, if it came from the committee, which I don't really remember either, it would be based on the assessed value. No. Yeah. Right. Yes. I think that's correct. And it's basically the value of the, of the town's contribution is mm -hmm. the assessed right. value. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, it, that's, that, that's the rationale for having it in the transaction. Got it. That helps with the financing as well. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. that is an element of the financing. We have, we have ownership, and it's my understanding is the state looks more favorably when communities do have a, an ownership stake. In Correct. Mm -hmm. Will that ever change if, because of the environmental issues, the size of the parcel? That's a number that's agreed upon. That number is not changing between these two parties. What's the size of the parcel? Correct. Okay. Well, they, they haven't asked for the change, and we did not negotiate a change, so uh, it's, that's the number. The, the part of the property that's in question is the capped town dump, so the value of the property is really where the building's going to be. The, the other is just going to be grass and maybe a walkway because yeah. we can't really point. disturb it. Well, there also will be, the, the plan is that there will be, um, <clears throat> there, there, could, there could be uses on the town property if we retain the town property uh, for uh, solar panels that would service the property. We would, they would just have a license to be able to use our property uh, to put those solar panels on. We would be retaining the troubled property if, in fact, it requires that we go that way. So they, they still get full use of the property, even though they're not going to have ownership of the entire parcel. And the utility easement? Uh, utility that? easement was uh, something that I had requested. Um, if for those who may, for those who don't suffer from insomnia and have recently picked up a copy of the Town Center South plan, um, in that plan it was envisioned, potentially envisioned, that uh, if there was development on the driveway property public works facility uh, at some point, um, and anywhere down there, there was, there was a, a potentially identified need for 
common septic. Uh, and specifically, the Agricultural Society's uh, fairgrounds uh, was, was targeted, was identified as a potential area to put uh, a common septic system. So uh, again, I apologize for the late hour of inserting that question, but I did happen to, to, to pick up Town Hall South mm -hmm. document a week, a week or so <clears throat> ago uh, and said, well, the easiest way to get connected to the Agricultural Society's property would be across this as opposed to coming out and doing the street line up driveway or mm. Whitfield uh, and then back down again. So I asked if we could reserve that, uh, uh, reserve a right through that easement, uh, a utility easement, and we appreciate neighborhood work, neighbor works uh, uh, agreeing to that. So Great. So future future possibility. Right. So it doesn't add any cost. Excellent. It's just no. it's just an opportunity for the town maybe someday. Mm -hmm. We got Understood. the idea. We have the ability to do. We have it. the yep. ability to. Perfect. So rather All than right. have to negotiate at a later point. Mm -hmm. Right. So again, thank you very much for that uh, consideration. Mm -hmm. My only other question is procedural, and it relates to your very first comment about the order of things, and maybe this is more a question yes. for Pam. Yeah. Right. yeah. So Four things to do what, today. what will happen is there's a whole set of conditions within the, the signed contract. Mm -hmm. They have conditions, and we have ours, to get town meeting approval, to get, you know, have a public hearing in accordance with statute, and to have the 824. If the town meeting votes no, then the agreement is void. We will technically mm -hmm. send a termination notice or what have you. Mm -hmm. So you're just basically authorizing to enter into a contract subject to a series of conditions. Mm -hmm. Why would we not hold the town meeting first and hold the town vote first and then authorize the first selectman to enter into this? It, you could, but we just didn't set the contract up that way. Mm -hmm. the, the language of the contract doesn't say that. Um, technically, um, I'm more comfortable having a signed agreement where both parties are bound right away subject to these conditions of instead of something that's floating out there for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And the developer has signed, mm -hmm. so uh, the developer is committed. Committed. Yeah. I just want to point, point out that. Well, and the board yeah. isn't committed unless it goes. Unless it goes through. Yeah, I understand that. Otherwise, as Pam just suggested, you would go to town meeting with a draft agreement mm -hmm. that you'd be voting on a draft agreement rather than a final agreement subject to the town meeting's approval. So Which you could raise questions at the town meeting then, like this might change or that might change. So I think as Pam, as Pam said, it's huh. better to have everything as precise as possible and these lawyers have made everything very precise mm -hmm. so, uh, before you actually ask for that final authorization, which well, is the town meeting. And the problem is that we're taking an action without having heard from the town. And it is the town's decision. That's why it has to go to town meeting. That's why I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, it's a it's, it's just continue. you're going to have it, because it cannot truly bind the town mm -hmm. until these steps have occurred. So I you're not eliminating those steps. I understand that. You're just trying to get it nice and, per, you know, as George is saying, as nailed down as possible so that what the town is considering is pretty good. That's clear to me. But <laughs> as a selectman who's going to vote on this, I'm not sure I want to until I know what the town has to say. That's, that's my plan. I mean, Susan's point is that we don't have the input of the citizens whether philosophically this is what the town wants. Exactly. We I mean, we had the legalese down so that what we're presenting to the town is what we would be entering into. We, but we haven't gotten their input, I although mean, we have had public uh, yeah, hearings. Yeah, we haven't had a town meeting, but we've had, I think, three or four public forums over the last four years, mm -hmm. and then discussed it at length at some of our selectmen meetings, which are, as we know, televised. Mm -hmm. And it's been also reported, the last story was a headline in the Guilford Courier, uh, three weeks ago so I realize we haven't had the official legal meeting with the town citizens but I do believe that anyone who had any interest pro or con has had an opportunity to come and look at the diagrams and ask questions and they will again at that meeting right I think the only other thing I'd say procedurally is this is the consistent with how we've handled our other contracts for sale or purchase mm -hmm. We do it exactly this way with these conditions. Okay. I think what you were asking for is, uh, Susan, uh, is 
this thing out loud about it for a moment, you'd be asking the town meeting for some sort of conceptual approval mm -hmm. of conveyance of the property, yes. which would not be, which would not be uh, um, a, final a final agreement. So you'd have to go back to the town meeting again, as I understand the charter, because the concept of a conceptual approval is really not legally binding. I think what is what will be legally binding is the, are the details of this agreement mm -hmm. uh, if town meeting votes in favor of it. So the idea of having town meeting vote conceptually on this project, while it may sound like a good idea, it, it's not really a binding approval because the details of the conveyance haven't been worked out. In mm -hmm. this way, the details are worked out, and then the uh, the town meeting can vote it up or down. If you disagree, if the town meeting disagrees with any aspect of the final agreement, then they could vote no. Well, that's why I'm aboard with this because, to Sandy's point, the public input phases have taken place. Right. We are now at the the legal stage of, right. of dotting right. I's and crossing T's, right. and that's what this town meeting is yes. all about: yeah. finalizing. We've had our public hearings you know, in, in the back and forth, and this is the document, and then the town gets to say, or right. gets to see what the document is. Exactly. And so, the idea, well, I mean, the Board of Selectmen has, have voted numerous times to move forward from one step to the next in this process, each time agreeing conceptually with the idea of conveying property <coughs> to some developer. We've ultimately w worked out an agreement with the developer in order to carry out this project. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if there hasn't been any kind of public approval of this idea. In fact, you've approved it several times That's along true. the way, moving it one step further and acceptance of grants. Acceptance Isn't that of the grants from public now. hearings and town meeting? The RFP, the agreeing with the RFP, mm -hmm. drafting the RFP, putting the RFP out there, mm -hmm. hiring a lawyer <coughs> to go over all the details to protect our interest. Mm -hmm. um, so. My comment to that, with all respect, yes. is that at each of those steps along the way, we have been told this isn't the final step. There will be plenty of opportunities to vote, to ask questions. This mm -hmm. is just one more step that we need to go through to get us to the end of the process. Right. So it's really not fair to turn around now that we're at the end and say that you've already, you've mm -hmm. already gone through all the steps. Right? It's like, no, the, no. it's like the frog in the boiling water, if you've heard that one. If you I put have, a, yeah, if you, you if the story goes, if you put a frog in a pot of water and turn the heat up gradually, he will die. But if you drop a frog into the pot of boiling water, he'll jump out again. Mm -hmm. So I just I don't want to have been sitting in the water while it heats up, and all of a sudden we get to a decision where the town has not had an opportunity to weigh in. Not an expert on the charter, but I believe that what the town meeting, which is our form of government, will vote on is whether or not to give this particular piece of property to this project. I don't think it's about the specific details. So personally, I prefer to have that direction from the town before taking an additional step. So that's going to be my vote. I think this is a great project. My only objection to the project is it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around five and a half million dollars to build 16 apartments. That I, I don't really understand that. But that's a, probably a topic for a different forum. No, I think it, I think right now is a, is an opportune time to talk about that. Okay. No, I, I would defer to the developers. This is, this is their project. Well, I, you know, I would just say that that's typically what we see as con average construction cost for a project like this, uh, using the funding sources that we use. Really. Well, I think part of the expense didn't wasn't it pointed out by the architect on the project that she I forget the term she used, but they want to build it to certain very mm -hmm. uh, sustainable environmental, environmental standards. standards, which costs I'm more sure that money. Adds to the cost. It ultimately saves money, but mm -hmm. it's going to cost more uh, mm -hmm. to build it to those specifications. And um, there was another reason of why it could be that much money in that way, but that for sure is part That's of it. That's part of it. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask this question. If we go through the town, uh, the public hearing and the town meeting, and there is something that causes you uh, some concern at that point, um, the methodology that's been proposed here, um, we, you know, it, it would go through regardless of your concerns, right? And that's and that is your yeah. issue here. So my question is, at the town meeting, uh, if we hear things uh, that raise significant concern or 
change your mind in terms of supporting this thing? Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity to go back and revisit the contract? So the town meeting would say, we, the town, are going to vote this down I, I, I'm unless not, I'm, you... I'm, I'm, no, I think I'm trying to answer your question. Yeah, well, no, oh, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't phrase yeah. it correctly. It okay. could very well pass a town meeting, but not meet the satisfaction of some of the board members. Uh, or at least one of the board members. Um, is that is that a fair representation of your concern? No. Okay. No. If it passes at town meeting, I'm I'm happy that the that the citizens have had a chance to voice their opinion and vote. So you know, it could play out that the town meeting, the town vote would say, we're going to vote this down unless you change X, Y, and Z, and then it will not have gone through, right. and then we have to kind of reconvene and see whether. We could change X, Y, and Z and make this thing work. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the town meeting and the people there would hold the power. Mm -hmm. okay. I, 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 two, two, two comments, and you raised a lot of great points, and it's a very helpful discussion. The $5.5 .5 million sounds like a lot and mm -hmm. as a gross number, with but no it's, land, a, right? it's essentially a commercial grade building that we're dealing with, mm -hmm. and, and with these. Uh, environmental and energy matters. If you divide it by 16, it's $344,000, which for a building, you know, a, a living unit is not an outrageous number in a town like Guilford. So it's not, I mean, for better or worse. Um, and again, understanding it's commercial level construction that we're sort of essentially dealing with. So that's sort of one. I kind of just want to, as you break the numbers down, it makes mm -hmm. a little more sense to me. When you first said it, I'm like, oh my goodness, let me round the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the town meeting piece and the concern, I, I had exactly the same thought that <coughs> as George articulated. If it's in, if it's in concept only, and maybe additional steps are, are necessary, but I don't I don't really see it. I think our obligation is to give the town a proposal to solve a problem, a specific proposal. Here's all the details. Mm -hmm. it's witnessed the first high school program 15 years ago. You know, if it's a bad idea and people think it's a bad idea, they'll let us know and, and we'll move accordingly. That'll, that'll crater and we'll sort of go back to the drawing board. But to have something that's almost complete but not quite, you'd, at a minimum you'd have to come back one more time and maybe that's not the end of the world. But I don't know that that's any more efficient than here's the proposal, let us know if you think it's a good idea and, and we'll go back. I mean, I think the odds of getting to the proper outcome are higher this way is the way it hits me. I think uh, mm -hmm. two quick points. One, I think the, uh, the price tag illustrates the reason why we're doing an affordable housing development um, and why the state contributes money to this. This it, that, mm -hmm. that price tag illustrates why we need affordable housing because uh, the cost of development in Connecticut in particular and Guilford specifically is extremely high. You that, um, the, the other point I would make and uh, Again, it, it actually reinforces the point you've made, which is there still are other steps beyond town meeting before this project becomes real, uh, including all the permit um, steps, well, in the wetlands approval, planning and zoning approval. It's a special permit uh, application, which means it's a, it's a uh, public hearing process for the, for the planning and zoning commission. Uh, now, those, those uh, aspects of the permit and review process focus on the specifics of the development uh, and how they relate to zoning and the other environmental rules, uh, but there are still further steps beyond the town meeting before this project becomes real. And um, the town meeting is where the vote is going to be taken, which is on February 11th, but we have a public hearing set mm -hmm. for February 4th. Mm -hmm. So that's another, after the meeting that we just had at the library, that's another, and that's an official town meeting mm -hmm. where people can come once again. No, it's an official public hearing, and that's the difference between public hearings and town meetings. I, I just, I guess, I didn't, I, I meant, I said that wrong. What I meant is it's, an, it's another um, opportunity set up by the government for the public to come and ask questions, right? right. They can mm -hmm. do that on the 4th. Mm -hmm. So... There is one more public possibility before the vote. I have to weigh in on, on Lou's point, and, and I agree completely. It is this board's responsibility 
to develop projects that we perceive as, as necessary and good for the citizens. And this is the process that has existed. I, I can appreciate your point, Susan, about you know making the decisions for the taxpayers without the taxpayers or having the chance to weigh in. But that is, in, in my mind, you know, to George's point about planning and zoning and in the wetlands, that's what all of those hearing processes are about. And you know, a little bit sometimes, you know, shame on the taxpayer for not paying attention until mm -hmm. the end. Uh, but to Lou's point, it is our responsibility as the board to, to accept the leadership role and present a plan that we have vetted to the best of our knowledge and now we ask for the more steps of input. And uh, I'm comfortable with it, frankly. Well, I agree that we should present the plan as it's been done. I just, my problem is signing it. Signing it. Now, signing in now is the problem. Well, I mean, do we want to have, you know, schedule a special meeting for immediately after the public or the town meeting Why and not? sign it? Sure. I mean, it's the mechanics of it. I, I don't know. I, yeah. There are four steps that we need to take today, right, if we do all four of them. Uh, the first of which is contract authorization, the second of which would be setting the public hearing, um, the third of which would be setting the town meeting, and then the fourth is the uh, mandatory referral to uh, planning and zoning. Is that correct? Is there a specific order that we should go in uh, for those? Um, do you have the date? Do you have the dates? Yeah, yeah. February 4th Four. and February 11th, so obviously we'd set right. those accordingly. Uh, mandatory referral. You have a date on that yet? Do you have anything from Tracy? No. no. no but we just make a referral. Before They'll the schedule meeting. it. Yeah. Yeah. So you could maybe do it in the order of those dates, knowing that the 824 right. would be uh, take place before right. the town meeting. Right. I'm going to agree with Charles. Um, we've done it this way, and I agree. I also agree. This is this board's responsibility to move things forward to the uh, to the. Uh, to the town meeting, that's our that's our responsibility and leadership. And I understand your concern um, that it appears to be a done deal. Well, for most intents and purposes, I think it's a done deal, and this board is supporting it and suggesting we do that. And the town meeting form of government has the right to say no. The leadership is wrong, um, and so I'm I'm comfortable with the process as uh, as stated. So. First one. First one. <laughs> First one. First one. First um, one. Is all it right. clear that on the on where are the meetings on the does that have to be part of your motion uh, where these meetings occur on the fourth and the eleventh? At least for the purpose of the of we the, have public, of the we public, have public we have public notices ready to go out. So, uh, so both, both meetings are at the community they're center, they're center. The and they're both at seven thirty in the evening. Yes, they are. Okay. And we intentionally chose the evening for these meetings so that it would give the most opportunity for people who wish to be there in person. So, you know, to my point earlier, you know, before, we've done it before where we, you know, scheduled or put on the agenda a vote for after the town meeting. We have done that. To Susan's point, mm -hmm. no, I don't have door. enough institutional memory to. Re I mean, I believe you. I just no, don't I remember. remember having votes after town meeting. And, you know, usually we you wait you know for the next meeting or 24 hours to digest the town meeting but I, I those are I believe those are usually related to ordinances or yeah, something along those lines I, I have seen this historically is, something like that but to tell you the truth that was kind of incorrect because okay. it's the town meeting that votes All right. it's not the board because they've taken a recommendation from the town meeting it's the town trying meeting to find a way to, <laughs> <laughs> to make it work <laughs> Okay. Okay. Any, any further, any, any more discussion on this? Right. No. All right. I'm going to, uh, first off, uh, is there a motion to allow the first electman to enter into, uh, to, uh, to sign the contract between the t uh, respective parties uh, pursuant to the uh, agreement that's been reached by uh, respective councils and in house uh, town council? Is there a motion? I'll I'll make I would love to make that. Motion. I should like the first thing. Thank you. And you're authorizing. And you authorize me to sign. Yes. Right. Right. I'm happy to second. Second. Any further discussions? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Recuse one, abstentions. One recuse. <laughs> Wait a second. Hey, hey, Wait a second. Stick to your guns. That's fine. Don't. Yeah. No. That's fine. 
All right, uh, second one. Uh, is there a motion to set the public hearing date for February 4th, 2020? Uh, you can make that. Uh, you can make that one. Yeah, <laughs> so moved. <laughs> um, uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none, motion carries. Is there a motion to set the town meeting date for, uh, for February 11th, 2020, also at the community center at 730? Is there a motion there? So moved. Second. So, Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, is there a motion to send to Planning and Zoning Commission uh, mandatory refer referral under Connecticut General Statutes 8-24 to obtain public comment and consider an act on a possible sale? Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. And the second. second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Another step. Well right. done. Yes, congratulations to uh, uh, the committee as well as uh, George and getting us to this point. Can you send the committee a little update? Thank you. With those dates. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Okay. Okay. I found the uh, reading notes. Oh, it was a lot. Oh, good. Right, so oh, good. Oh, so fourth is the public hearing. They were in this. I got drowned. Eleventh yeah. is the timing. Yeah. yeah. Incidentally, I may either be not not be there on the fourth, or at the minimum, I'm going to be late. Okay. Harry has a retirement there. I got to be at. Who does? My wife. Your spouse. <laughs> I think, think you better show it. Um, you better show it. It's that. her retirement. It's her retirement there. Yeah. That's right. Item five. Uh, finance director, Mary Jane Malvisi. What do you want to tell us about the the, state the, December, the, the December numbers? The state of the I municipality. Don't, you don't? <laughs> I don't have a lot to say. Yeah. Um, revenues, um, as you can see, are, are pretty much right on track to where we should be at this time or where we usually are at this time. Um, I don't really have any specific comments unless you have a question. Um, any, any unpleasant surprises from the state? No, no, no updates. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I did report that the the bonding uh, packages haven't been approved yet, and so we're subject to the possibility of not receiving some of our grants. Um, as far as I know, that has not moved forward. Well, bonding across the state has been first, uh, right? Correct. It's not right. It's not just state. us. Correct. Okay. Anything else on revenues? No, nope. thanks. Uh, similar story on the expenditure side. We are exactly where we were this time last year, um, just with some ups and downs, and those are typically timing um, issues. Um, I just wanted to make note in the building department, uh, the contracted services is 65% expended. Um, this, this year you'll see, uh, this week you'll see, um, the, bu the uh, budget request that we're actually going to um, I'll say properly fund that um, line item which has gone over the last few years. It started out as um, something we put in into for the high school project and that position has remained on for some of the very large projects we've had going on um, in Guilford. So that will be up for discussion um, this week and as we move forward um, through the budget um, process. So that was really the only one I wanted to make note of. Right. Yeah, go ahead. Capital is down compared to last year. Does that relate to it's, it's, state you, funding or just timing You of have the police on your agenda today, which is <laughs> um, just as an example of things that are just coming mm -hmm. um, across the table here mm -hmm. for um, expenditure. Just, just the timing of, of when these things are, are being done. No, no, no surprises or, okay. or issues or okay. in that area. Just a quick question. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it too early, it probably is, to assess the impact of the restructuring of the building permit fees? Um, you might want to speak to the building official this week. Um, um, there is a significant change in the revenue budget okay. that she has presented. Okay. She probably can give you um, better information than I can at this point. Fine. That's good. That's a fancy when way of saying say I don't know. you say significant change, up or down? Up. up. Increase, yes. 
what month did they become? I, I should remember this. October. 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 So it hasn't been a year. Oh, it, it's only been a couple of months. That's right. It's only right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. But we're seeing, you know, the December revenues, and again, if that's all, if that's just December, or if there was some catch up in there, um, at forty-one thousand, um, that uh, yeah, you carry that out, that uh, correct, that significantly over the original projection. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. could work. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. All like right. I said, you'll talk about it this yes, week. Yes, we will. Mm -hmm. All right. Expenses. Maybe. Mary Jane, anything you want to bring to our attention? Oh, that was expensive. That was it. That was expensive. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> it was. Um, uh, if there's nothing else, I have medical. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see that de December claims um, were almost exactly our, our monthly budget. Uh, we didn't we didn't pick up as much um, in December as I had expected since um, November was down for that week of Thanksgiving. I, um, we are averaging about 780000 um, a, a month, which is only 20% of our uh, budgeted claims. So we'll see how the second half of the year um, pans out. Uh, catastrophic claims uh, represent five claims, three of which are all that are over 75000 and only two of them are over the 150 thousand. So the amount that you have there is representative of only two claims. Okay. And that 150000 is actual, uh, actual benefits claims. paid. Correct. Benefits paid. Not, Checks not, out the not door. Not bills received. Checks out the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're, and that's when the stop loss kicks in, right? right. Yeah. Correct. We right. start to track it at 75000 and it kicks in at 150. And we have two at 150 and three. Three others at the, that have hit the 75. Um, but the this represents just the two. We don't kick in until 150. We just, um, over 75, we start to track those so that we can see what's coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. I always hate to comment on medical because, you know, you think people are alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, yeah. it's a yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tragic. At this point, at this point, we're covered 10% uh, of the ISL premium, a little better than 10% of the ISL premium. Is that consistent with previous years? That you it's, about, it's about the same. It's, it's coming in uh, month, month by month about the same percentage as we, ha we see year over year. Okay. Pretty steady. Well, one of these years the insurance company is going to catch up with us, right? Well, that's why our premium for that has been going up uh, in the last three yeah. years because we are, we are certainly utilizing it. Great. All right. Anything else? Uh, the only other thing I wanted to remind you is that um, at the Board of Finance meeting tonight, uh, Bloom Shapiro will be presenting the audit. Um, if you are able to attend, hopefully you all received your audits. They were in your mailboxes. Good. So that's at 7.30 this evening. It'll be the first item on the agenda. Perfect. Great. See you there. See you there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, item 6. Uh, Board of Ed Director uh, Cliff Gurnham, Operation Facility, Director of Facilities, Operations, and a few other things too, I think, right? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever nobody else wants to handle, you get. Well, they give it to me. Uh, I, uh, first item, 6.1, discuss and take possible action to award design and engineering services for renovations to Baldwin Middle School Kitchen to Antonazzi Associates in the amount of $15,700. Cliff? So I've been working with the uh, food service director uh, and evaluating the uh, kitchen and the serving area, uh, along with the age of the equipment within the cafeteria. And this year alone, we've lost three pieces of equipment uh, in that kitchen just because of the age. So we really come to the time where we need to uh, revamp the kitchen, and it uh, made sense to look at how the cafeteria functions and how they serve, the service lines and everything. So uh, we're looking to have Antonazzi, who's an on-call um, engineering architectural firm, to come in and give us a concept of what we can do in there to improve the ability to serve uh, the students, uh, you know, quicker, better, uh, get a more open feel to that uh, kitchen cafeteria. 
uh, and then also obviously look at the equipment and what do we need, what can we get rid of, and upgrade what we have in there since the age of most of that stuff is uh, well over 20 years. So, uh, so the Standing Building Committee reviewed the proposal. Um, they made the recommendation to move forward with Antonazzi in the amount of uh, $15,700. Any questions? <coughs> I do have one. Sure. Uh, on Thursday, uh, I will be meeting with your food service director uh, as well as uh, um, the consultant hired by South Central Regional Council of Governments at um, over at A.W. Cox School. Correct. We are in line to receive a grant uh, to trial a uh, food waste diversion um, program mm -hmm. at uh, Cox. Anybody's welcome okay. to come over if you want to. It's going to kind of be a working meeting. One of the things is to take a look at the flow and how things work. 40%, um, I'll get off, this is a little soapbox, but 40% of all uh, weight, <coughs> in, uh, solid waste, is food byproduct, water, et cetera. So the, you know, taking that piece out of the waste stream can eventually uh, wind up uh, with less landfill uh, as well as excuse me, uh, cheaper disposal costs. So the uh, best time to catch people on this thing is when they're young, teach them uh, when they're young. Uh, I've, seen some, I've seen some examples of this being done in other schools throughout the state, but the, the, the model this year, uh, Scrog has, uh, has uh, money available, or will have money available, and we have been identified as one of the, uh, um, the pilot schools. Uh, now, let's not, be, let's not be naive about this. This is creating a whole other stream Right, so collection is a, is 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 a piece and a part of that. Um, it you know if you ha hire Blue Earth to do your you know your food waste composting, which is a, a company that's actually in 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 uh, business in the shoreline area, they'll collect your food waste, but it's like another disposal service fee. So um, that's one of the challenges. Is that uh, but there are there are some other things that are happening mm -hmm. um, with. Uh, um, Folks, there's an outfit called Quantum Biopower in Southington, Connecticut, that is taking food waste stuff and turning it into electricity. And uh, the town of Southington has seven buildings which are uh, get free electricity because it's sold back onto the grid. Mm -hmm. So there's some. So actually, nonetheless, can you make sure that that is part of the discussion? Mm -hmm. That is the setting up the, pro the necessary processes for food uh, waste diversion and collection. I'm going to be at that meeting on Thursday, Thursday as, well, as well, but uh, we will move that with, forward with, with this as well. Lousy. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Off my soapbox now. Um, is there any uh, any other questions on that? Is there a motion to approve uh, the uh, award to Antonazzi Associates for 15700 So moved. Second. I'll uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. 6.2, consider take possible action to award bid number 5-1920, Melissa Jones Elementary School, HVAC and electrical upgrades. Correct. So we're in the process of updating all the uh, heat pumps and air handlers uh, throughout uh, Melissa Jones Elementary School. Uh, we obviously did design the bid and everything. Uh, we did get uh, five bidders to respond to uh, the bid. Uh, we did a scope review with the two lowest bidders which was uh, Orlando Anuli uh, Orlando Anuli uh, and Sons, and then uh, Save More. Uh, Save More, as you may know, just did the Baldwin Phase One HVAC project. Uh, they were a parent low bidder for this project. Uh, we did the full scope review, found that there was no concerns, uh, no misunderstandings with the scope, uh, schedule, uh, anything of that nature. So the Standing Building Committee and Antonazzi, who was the architect uh, on the project, made recommendation to move forward with the lowest bidder, uh, save more uh, cooling and heating, uh, including alternate one in the amount of uh, $1,374,300. Any, any other questions? So you've worked with that Correct. He, before? He had a... Uh, uh, tight schedule with the Baldwin Middle School uh, and managed to uh, hold to that schedule. Mm -hmm. He was also um, under the next lowest bidder for the Baldwin project by about the same amount. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. there was no unnecessary change orders or no ramp up of change orders to make that 
you know, hundred thousand or whatever the difference was back. So we think it'll be a a good contractor for the work. And the work typically gets done in the summertime. Typically That's, it is. This time we are going to do some work uh, during the school season. Uh, it's a one-for-one -one change out for the heat pump. Okay. And a heat pump could be about, you know, the size of me, maybe a little bigger. Uh, so we're almost just essentially swapping that piece of equipment out for the other one. So there's some prep work and everything we'll do, and then we'll do the swap out. So uh, we'll work with the school scheduling. Uh, it shouldn't interfere with the operation of the school, the students, or the students' day. All right. Anything further? Is there a motion to uh, award the contract uh, to save more cooling and heating uh, in the amount of one million three hundred seventy-four thousand three hundred dollars? I'll make the motion. And the second. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Um, three. Uh, discuss and take possible action on cool school construction grant resolutions for solar panel installations at two schools. Uh, so we, as you know, during the energy performance contract, uh, put in solar throughout the district. Uh, they tried to put solar on DPW uh, building. However, structurally, they were unsuccessful in doing so. Uh, the cost to um, rehab that building structurally to put the solar on did not make sense. It was not cost effective. So. Uh, we have uh, reevaluated uh, two of the schools, Baldwin and Melissa Jones, and have been able to uh, program a couple more roofs for additional solar. Uh, so we're really just trying to move that solar from DPW over to the school. So again, the town is still going to get that savings, and it's still part of the energy performance contract. It's just that we're looking at trying to get some reimbursement because uh, we do have to do some roofing work. So it would balance that out. So we need the three resolutions in order to file this grant. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Well, I mean, it, 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 it leads off with samples of three required resolutions. And apparently one of the samples came from the town of Seymour. Seymour, yeah. right. That's correct. <laughs> I mentioned that to Matt when we really sent it over. There was, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, so yeah. this happened in the correction. Subbing that out. Yes. And, and I have one other question. And number three, is resolved that the Board of Selectmen here, hereby authorizes at least the preparation of schematic drawings and outlines. I'm not sure what that at least adds or what it means in that context. I mean, if we're just authorizing schematic yeah. drawings and outline yeah. specs, that, that, I, that I, language like a, is bizarre. I, I, equal to yeah, at least man. is a little problematic. I yeah. would take that out. It probably had some reference to right. where we put it. Unless they had, and somebody had a multi step process yeah. and they were all. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we're going with drawings yeah and then there's going to be separate resolutions for the construction we'll, we'll take that from you at the appropriate time <laughs> all right good. so take at least out that's what take at least out yes. yep. all right um let's see if we can do a motion here uh, to approve the these um resolutions. To approve modified resolutions to represent the town of guilford and the removal of the word at least from the third Yep. Uh, is that satisfactory? Well, and the heading says samples, but but these are real resolutions that we're <coughs> passing now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. With those. Yes. With those, with those modifies, modifies. modifications. And, and, which is all part of apparently applying to DAS for the grant mm -hmm. support right. for the project. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So they won't see this form. They see the your right. minutes right. with the resolution in them. Okay. Okay. You okay with that? Um, says you. Yes. <laughs> Is Karen okay? Yeah, you okay with it? I'm okay with it. So who put that before? I guess that, that, was, that was Lou. Is there a second? Second. second? second. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Stay. Excuse us. Hearing none. Motion carries. Cliff, thank you very much. Thanks, thank you. Cliff. Item 7 Police Chief Jeff Hutchinson. 7.1. Uh, consider and take possible action to waive uh, the bid process and purchase two patrol vehicles from Jengris Ford. Afternoon. Good afternoon, Hello. sir. How are we doing? So as we get into this, I have uh, several uh, requests here. They've all been uh, presented to and approved by the police commission last week. Just FYI as it comes to you. Uh, the first one being the vehicles. Um, these are budgeted uh, replacement vehicles. Uh, we've had some trouble with Ford. 
Uh, they've uh, not been delivering as quickly as uh, we would have liked, so we're a little behind schedule on it. So when we talk about that question that was asked before, um, the capital question, yeah. we're behind because Ford's been behind in delivering. Um, but but what's there's a the change over in that. Vehicle. There's a there is, and that's floors. why it's yeah, and that's why it's been taking so long for them to get those deliveries. I'm making up. excuses, but yeah. I mean, I think that's a more of a macro problem than a us problem. All right, yeah, I'm just pointing out why we're coming, mm -hmm. why we're coming in now. Thank um, you. So the two vehicles we're looking for um, are we're requesting uh, sixty-seven thousand four hundred thirty dollars to cover the cost of two vehicles. We're requesting that we go through uh, Jagger's Ford. Um, they have them. And uh, they're a Connecticut company, and we like to keep that here if we can. We've dealt um, with them before. And we've dealt with them. Um, and, and they have a, uh, logistically, it works out better for us. The price, as you can see, is almost the same as the other, off by $2. But um, I would recommend we use uh, Jangris and purchase mm -hmm. those two vehicles. Yeah. Any further questions? Mm -hmm. um, is there a motion? So moved. A second. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recuses? Hearing none. Motion carries. Seven dot two. Uh, discuss and take possible action to waive the bid process to purchase two patrol. Excuse me. Two patrol vehicle video cameras from sole source vendor. Um, yeah. We use uh, watch guard video cameras. Uh, it's our whole system is based on that. Both our uh, in car and our and our body worn cameras are all watch guard. Uh, we need to buy watch guard. It's the only ones we have. We need to replace two of them, and we're requesting that we purchase these two through watch guard mm -hmm. at a cost of, sorry, $11,340. All right. Any further questions? Is there a motion to approve for the amount of uh, $13,400? 11340 So moved. And Second. 340 not 430 yet. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recuse? Hearing none. Motion carries. 7.3. Uh, consider and take possible action to waive the bid process and contract with Sully's Garage for patrol vehicle uplift. Uh, several years ago, we started using uh, this vendor for uh, police vehicle outfits. They're one of the primary vendor outfitters in Connecticut. Um, they are cheaper than the uh, state contracted okay. vendor. Uh, they're also uh, significantly more convenient for us. They they transport their vehicles back and forth. Uh, they're located in West Haven, the other vendors in, in Middletown. We used them one year, and when we had, uh, you know, invariably when, you're, when you do an outfit with the amount of equipment they install, uh, any issues you might have, uh, it would take us two officers to drive down there, drop a car, come back, they'd have them for two weeks, and then we'd have to take another couple officers to go out there. But this vendor, in addition to being cheaper, um, sends their flatbeds out, gets the cars, brings them out, brings them back. Um, and that's just one example of the service that we get that I think uh, warrants uh, using them and, and not using the state contract and leaving the bid. So at a cost of 28272 for the upfit of two vehicles, uh, we're requesting that you approve that. Is there a motion to do so? I'll, I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recuses? Hearing none. Motion carries. Aye. Item 7.4. 7.4. Discuss and take possible action on the purchase of a police canine. Um, for those who are not aware, we've had a um, generous benefactor in town make a donation uh, to our canine program. Um, as you all know, we have one canine right now, um, and this individual um, was interested in making a, a donation. It's uh, uh, I'll, I'll say the name. They were at the uh, police commission meeting a couple meetings ago to offer this and provide a check for the cost of a dog and the upfit of a vehicle to to manage that. Um, uh, Mr. Larry Cohen and his wife Margaret. Um, they've also they also happen to uh, they live on a piece of property that's part Guilford, part Madison, um, and they've already donated one to Madison. So oh, nice. it was time to come to Guilford. <laughs> um, but uh, so they've so they've donated that they've provided the check. There's a separate account set up, uh, but because the cost of the uh, animal itself is over that 7,500, uh, we need to come to you for the approval of uh, the purchase of that um, that canine. Very generous. It is very generous. Yes. Is this going to be the second? It'll be yes, the second canine. So now we'll have a uh, a program where we have two dogs. Uh, the other one came on three, three and a half years ago, by the time this comes on, we'll have a rotating um, um, 
almost okay, 24 nice. hours we'll probably have it. Though. Yeah, we'll have two shifts, two so shifts. the requirement will be that they... So that was uh, going to be my question. Yeah. By having a second canine, it doesn't divert resources. I mean, no, it, 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 still could no, do the job that's enhanced. At that yeah, they, it's, it's yeah. free backup for the officer that's there, and yeah. it enhances the uh, our ability to do everything from, you know, searching missing kids to uh, okay, looking for suspects. I, I, I support this and all of that, but uh, the question in my mind is, you know, the ongoing expense of maintaining, I mean, how, how right. much do we right. contribute so, to the upkeep? So the additional cost that you're going to see is um, there's a state statute, a state law that was passed a while ago when a, a police officer has a police canine, we're required to compensate them for the care of the dog outside of their of their regular duty. The, the deal we have in place in Guilford is on the days off uh, where the officer's not working, they get one hour each day of overtime to care for the dog, and that's the agreement uh, we have. On the days where they're working, because it has to be every day. How about pet uh, bills and food and stuff? Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm just going through oh, the list. The list. Sorry. On the days that they're working, um, they're scheduled, most officers are in eight hour, they're scheduled for a seven hour shift. The other hour, is for them to care for the dog, so they're on duty. That doesn't mean we can't keep them here. That doesn't mean um, we can't make them work more if we need them. Uh, vet bills, uh, you'll see when we present the budget this week, uh, does increase uh, each dog by about, and it depends. It's like the insurance you were talking about before. Generally, uh, it's just your, you know, your regular appointments with the vet to make sure the dog's okay. Um, but if you have some sort of medical issue with the dog, it might go up. But we're we're looking at. Um, about additional twenty five hundred dollars a year in the vet bills, um, and they'll be and and food is probably another for another dog is uh, we're in like the twelve hundred dollar range. Mm -hmm. So. So if we didn't have a donation, would you have wanted one? Would you have asked for one? Yes, of because you know a canine program having a dog is one thing, but to have an effective canine program uh, where you're relying upon that mm -hmm. on multiple shifts and to have. A situation where we can continue to rotate uh, handlers and dogs into the program over a staggered period it makes the most sense. So the timing is actually really good for us that we didn't just dump a couple dogs in at once because mm -hmm. um, the dog life usually for a working dog is anywhere between seven and ten years. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it makes sense for us. And yes, we would be uh, eventually coming to you for that. It just so happened that they came forward to us and, and made that offer. And I, I thought it was. Um, I thought it would have been silly not to accept it, and the commission agreed that from a program perspective and from a uh, law enforcement services and public safety perspective, it made sense. When we have the opportunity to help out another town who doesn't have a dog and mm -hmm. that type of thing, is that just reciprocal type of situation? It's reciprocal no? because okay. we've been taking the help for 30 years uh, without a dog. Um, and no one's ever, um, you know, they don't charge us for it. So uh, the way it generally works is if we have a dog working, we'll use our dog. If we need another dog, um, we might ask for somebody else. You might need multiple dogs on the search. If we don't have any working, we'll call around. There's a list. We'll call around to the town and say, anybody got a dog working? Uh, if they don't uh, and we really need it, we'll call our dog in off duty to come in. Um, so if, we're, if we have a dog on shift and another town doesn't have theirs working, we're certainly going to send them, and we have frequently. I, uh, I'm personally aware that, you know, the situation with a dog often is, is a timing thing. I mean, you know, having a dog available five or six hours from when you need it, you know, it's like having an emergency Yeah, no, it's never, it's never five or six hours. Yeah. 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 No, the way, the way but I'm saying it's if it were that situation, by having one in, you know, a few miles away, oh, well, sure. yeah. 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 it can so save a life. Increase yeah. the response time even more. I guess yeah. is what we're getting at. Yeah. Oh, sure. And just an example, we only had one, <clears throat> we only have one dog, and the other day we had a, a, a missing child, oh. um, without getting into personal information on it, but uh, our dog wasn't working. The state got there with their dog within... 15 minutes, and we had found the child in probably 35 minutes. Wow. So that's pretty much the same. I mean, a few years ago in my neighborhood, exactly the same situation. Yeah. We, we got a dog from New Haven. Yeah. Your department got a dog. And that's pretty much what the timing was a half hour wait, an hour, and you found him. And that right. It. And that's a, about what you could expect. And uh, yeah, and it does give us an opportunity to, again, work regionally because as you work together, uh, you know, with SWAT teams and accident reconstruction teams, um, dogs is another part of that element. So, 
Do you need a motion? Is, is there a training component to this? There is a training component. So the off the handler and the dog will go to um, the state police training K nine training academy for sixteen weeks. Um, and then we the, have some of the volunteers, something of that type of thing. Uh, we have a lot of people interested. We're in the selection <laughs> process right now. <laughs> Plum assignment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. When, you, so when we get the name, you let us know. Yes, we don't have the name yet. Um, <laughs> so we'll usually let the handler have some input into that. Mm -hmm. um, and this yeah, is the place we used last time. They're a very uh, reliable. Uh, and it comes resource. with some, some level of uh, in, insurance in terms of. Yeah, uh, if the, if the dog doesn't work out, they give you a new dog. Right. Um, <laughs> at least replace it. Yeah. So. Okay. Jim, this isn't an important question, but Lou and I are wondering what dual dog means. Uh, on the, on dual the, means it would be a patrol slash drug dog. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some are, some are, so this dog will Double likely dog. be uh, patrol, it Double. will be dual. Uh, certain dogs can't be dual. Uh, labs, for example, you'll they'll be used for either a bomb dog specifically or a drug dogs. They're, they don't make an ideal patrol oh, okay. dog mm -hmm. partner. You know, Link that, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but some of the, uh, the shepherds you can cross train for uh, <laughs> drug. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, so. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. Is there a motion to approve the expenditure for seventy nine hundred and fifty dollars to uh, Connecticut K nine services? So moved. Second. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Recusals. Hearing none. Motion carried. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Okay. Oh, one more thing. While I'm here, we launched our shoreline diaper drive this morning. Yeah. Uh, right. Saw it on the news, so but news. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, agencies: mm -hmm. North Brantford, Brantford, Guilford, Madison, Troop F, Clinton. Uh, all participating. We had a great response last year, raising, uh, collecting over 26,000 diapers and 26,000 wipes, something wow. in that range. Um, starting actually, next week at the PD, any of those PDs just walk in, there'll be a bin for collection. It's a really uh, important need for a lot of the people uh, mm -hmm. in our uh, communities, uh, not something that's covered by uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's uh, fantastic. Good. That's a great, great, that's a great cause. I thought I'd throw that plug in there. And the Thank you, Kilimanjaro Jane. climb is coming up. And the Kilimanjaro climb, our lieutenant, uh, who's the regional, uh, one of the directors for Connecticut Special Olympics, has volunteered um, and will be participating in a fundraiser for Special Olympics that involves him climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. So he's leaving on February 9th. I, he's going up February 9th, I believe. Can we still drop off right. a donation? Uh, they're accepting Online. donations right up. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay. So, and what, I, and then, and another great uh, uh, thing to raise money for. So, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. great. Okay, okay. Thank got you. my Jake. shameless plugs in. There you yeah. go. Good. There you go. Item eight. Our town engineer, Janice Plasiak. How are you this afternoon? Yeah, how are you? Good. Uh, eight dot one. Discuss and take possible action on the award of RFP uh, number one dash one nine two zero Falcon Road and Chimney Corners Road Coastal Resilience Projects Engineering Services. Floor is yours. Okay. So I had provided in my in my letter to you a little background on yep. the two locations. Um, we've experienced damage uh, to the seawall numerous times at Falcon Road, and it's clearly not going to be sustainable going forward. Um, you know, the last repair was simply that, a repair. Um, so we're looking at some kind of long-term solution there. Um, and also uh, Chimney Corners Road, we find, is flooded and underwater at any extreme high tide we have now. The road it sits as low as elevation four in some locations, and it prevents access to a number of homes uh, at the end of that road, as well as um, to the, um, the Sachem's Head Yacht Club, which also uh, has access through that road. Um, so in knowing that we have these challenges, um, we put out an RFP um, trying to, you know, an RFQ and an RFP. First RFQ was responded to by six firms and then a uh, small selection co committee reviewed those uh, RFQs and we interviewed three, three firms and asked for proposals from those three firms. Um, kind of dealing with both of these projects. And um, we had selected race coastal engineers as what we thought would be the best fit for the, both projects, bringing to them, with them a, a lot of experience. And particularly their approach to both projects was uh, something we looked at, including cost. Um, they were the, the mid-priced uh, mm -hmm. firm, um, but we thought, felt they brought some added analysis to the project um, that the lower cost firm um, didn't seem to pre present in their proposal to us. 
And so um, really what we're going to do is approach this in a, in a phased approach. So they provided costing all the way through construction. But um, because the scope isn't clearly defined at this point, we're just going to proceed with the schematic design and permitting. And as you know, permitting through the regulatory agencies can be challenging and can also guide kind of what we end up with our solution. So uh, I feel it's best that we do take a phased approach to proceeding with this project. Um, so Will the neighbors have an early opportunity for input? Because uh, I, I, I know both of these projects and you know, the neighbors are very aware of, yes. of all of the issues and uh, I, I just wondered yes. you know, if they're early in the process so we don't end yeah. up with a... Absolutely. It was spelled out that, you know, um, the Sachem's Head Association is adjoining property owners on uh, Falcon Road on both sides as well as represents a lot of the neighborhood, but also the, you know, actual abutters um, and users of the of these roads will be involved in early on in some kind of concepts um, to kind of gauge some feel. I've already had some outreach to some of them with the repairs that we did at Falcon Road, as well as um, being contacted by a number of the property owners on Chimney Corners Road with the challenges of getting to their homes at times. So I've had a number of conversations Falcon with a few. Road, you might even have to go into the private property to do their tennis court parking area. Yeah, there's a chance we may have to relocate a little bit and do But it might be worth it to have a road right. Right. That's, that's permanently or right. long term yeah. fix. I mean, right. people it might like be prepared some to sacrifice. Here who are seen sound willing to consider some private yeah. public. Yeah, yes, yes. Right. And even with chimney corners, I've talked to some private property owners on both sides of the road that play a key factor in being able to protect the road from the Frequent flooding. Right. Keep in mind, this isn't going to be uh, storm-related flood protection. This is really just the nuisance frequent flooding we're seeing from high tides into a certain elevation. Um, the long-term solution for chimney corners is going to be everyone having to really elevate their homes and really, you know, it's going to be a lot more involved than what we're proposing here. But we think it would bring a lot of value added to the neighborhood and safety for access to their homes. Um, and the funding for this is going to come out of the uh, coastal uh, road bond? Coastal roads account. Uh, account, right. Good. Uh, any other questions? No? Do we need motions? I think we need a motion to approve the um, award. Yeah, you got it. Charlie. Charlie just summarized it. <laughs> uh, Karen Hales. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be much longer in a minute. <laughs> It'll be uh, wonderful. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, item two: Consider and take possible action on construction of a driveway within the right of way of Old Sachem's Head Road, uh, an A3 Town Road. So probably let's start with the description of an A3 Town Road. Right. So it's it's a, a road that we own but we don't maintain, and in in some cases we're not sure we really even own it but <laughs> um, we you know we have it as an accepted road on our road list and but we also don't maintain it so it's it's a right-of-way basically without any improvements on it and actually in this case this particular right-of-way does have already a driveway on it for an adjacent property owner and this would be an extension of that driveway further in to allow for access to yet another property further in um, this is um, actually a property at 65 feet Sachem's Head Road which has frontage it's a small existing house on that lot, um, but it's in the floodplain. It's basically built in wetlands. And um, to the, the property owner, um, who happens to be our prior town engineer and his son, it's actually in his son's name, purchased the property and they want to rebuild. And they found a higher ground area to rebuild the house, which uh, allows for access off of this old Sachem's Head Road right away, uh, better access than off of Sachem's Head Road. Um, so, um, when I was approached for just extending it, we had some conflicting mapping in the, in the files about where property lines were with some of the adjoining property owners across that right of way. So, to be sure that we weren't, um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we had the legal authority to grant that use and no one was going to come claiming that they had ownership of that right of way. Um, so, the, the um, Mr. Portley did have an attorney review it. That letter was included. Um, it was his consideration um, that it was a town road. Um, that's a letter from him. 
in addition to that we met with all the adjacent property owners adjacent to the right of way that w where this driveway will go to go over what the proposal was to see if they had any concerns or claims as well there were you know a few concerns that we addressed in terms of pitch of the road of the driveway and things like that but there was no claim of ownership and they basically recognized that it was a right of way for for public you know for this type of of use um, it is going to be the property owner's responsibility to um, construct the driveway and to maintain the driveway. There's no responsibility on the town's part to maintain it. Um, if it were to become a, a town road in the future, then those, you know, those improvements that have been made will be um, replaced with improvements by the town. And in all likelihood, if it's ever built, it might be a, a roadway. And then they would still be able to have access. Um, the only thing I, I'm struck by, unless I misread this, so that the lawyer that says, you know, from a legal opinion, he doesn't see an issue. And it, it, am I correct that that lawyer is the owner of the, the property that is selling to the son? Uh, the I don't know. The son, the son owns the property. They went out and hired their own attorney to do this. So what's the property that sh that um, Portly's son is? Um, what's the address of that property? Sixty five Sachem's Head Road. And this. So what, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, please. No. So I I'm seeing this letter of December third. Michael Sweeney. He goes, dear, dear Mr. Portly, as the owner of record of such, you have. Oh, okay. You have mind. misread it. Yeah. yeah, I misread it. Okay. Can you see, in your professional capacity, can you see any risk to the town if we said yes to this? No. No, and typically this would be something I would normally handle in my own office usually for an access, you know, off, like with an, uh, an encroachment excavation permit for a driveway. I think the thing that really brought it to the attention that we should really kind of vet this a little more and, and was to, um, because of the fact that there was some property maps that were in our land record files that showed potential ownership of the right of way. So I think, you know, in, in all clear, you know, clarity, I think it's, it's, your, it's the town's right of way. You, you folks have authority over the use of the right of way. So we wanted to bring it to you to make sure that, you know, and due diligence with the uh, property owner who wants the use of the right of way. Um, um, you know, we asked him to do some due diligence. Right. Does in some of our earlier conversations, I think we talked about this. Does this this road, old Sachem said, even though it's abandoned, is that a potential pathway uh, yeah. for coastal uh, coastal resilience? Yes. Yeah, so it's it's not it's not technically abandoned. It's just it's just not improved. Oof. Okay. So it's still retained as an A3 road by the town's actions back in I think it was '61 that it was still felt we should retain this right away. Um, it does potentially serve as an alternative high road to what is Sachem's Head Road, which is subject to flooding and with, you know, if sea level rise and things continue with um, the impacts of climate change, then we may find ourselves looking for alternatives for access to pretty much that whole area of Sachem's Head, and this could potentially be one possibility. So the retention of the right away is important. Um, it does provide frontage to a number of lots along Sachem's Head Road, of which 65 is one of them. It was part of an old subdivision. Um, I forgot how many lots it was, but um, so, but most of those properties currently have ac their their access off of Sachem's Head Road. At at that time, the developer, when they subdivided the land, you know, chose to not improve the right-of-way of old Sachem's Head Road for access and just utilize uh, Sachem's Head Road for access to these lots. I mean, the other thought I had was the now owner of this property, arguably, let's say they're going to get a mortgage, they're going to need title insurance. They need to get a title commitment for that insurance, arguably. So, I mean, I'd get more comfort if we said to them, Go get a title instead of just this legal opinion letter. Go get a title commitment from an, a title insurance company, and see if it the title insurance company is comfortable that there is sufficient. They're, they're not uh, claiming. Authority. They're not they're claiming not, ownership of. They're not claiming ownership of the right of way. No, understood. The town but, is claiming. But access. 
rights. <coughs> in other words, the title company would be able to kind of support the fact, and we could rely on the title company that would say, you are entitled to access off this unimproved well, A3 I th road. I think that that's the town's authority to, to say we, we have authority over this right of way or not. Um, I don't think, because it's so old and if you did a title search, there's the possibility the town doesn't own the right of way. Um, but we're still claiming it as an A3 road on our list. So, hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> that. almost more worrisome. Well, a lot of our no, roads that we know. maintain, improve, and continue to improve yeah. and maintain, we don't necessarily own no. the fee to. We we do control the right of way of it, though. And that's what we're and we have, what we're trying to maintain. Here. Right. So yeah. that's where one of my concerns was from a legal standpoint was one 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 of these adjacent property owners. If, so if it's either held by the original owner of the land that the right of way is on, it was either deeded to the town, which I'm not sure that would have been the case, or it the adjacent property owners would own it. So those are the the three scenarios. Um, the person who originally probably owned the land is no longer with us likely and it's been an act of this body and I think the town meeting back in 1961 to claim it as an A3 road. Um, so at, for instance some other road in town that someone wants to put a driveway on, I would issue them a permit and they would put their driveway on it. This is an A3 road the town's claiming ownership of as an A3 road. And does the, the adjacent property owner have a uh, right away from us to access <coughs> with like their there's driveway? A, no, there's no, there's no easement or anything. It's yeah. just use of the public right of way. So, did, so do we know if we approve that for that landowner? No, that was not approved through this board. I don't believe. Okay. As my, there's a number of these scenarios <coughs> where longer driveways were extended through unimproved right of ways to properties, and that was. Kind of perfunctory done through the yeah, engineering he's not office. Not requesting any ownership, just the right to use it. No, he's I mean, not. He doesn't claim ownership, ownership of it. Right, he's yeah. just using it for access, sure and he's going to actually is, uh, invest in it by improving it for his access, as opposed to us having to provide that access or improvements. Pam, what's the risk of us not doing what you're asking? I, 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 I'm, I think <clears throat> I would suggest maybe cabling it until I could. Um, research that it's not research really but it's just I want to well, we discussed this and it was you know I thought we felt that it was as long as we had the adjacent property owners fully aware of what was going to occur and there were no objections which I met out in the field with them right. myself with the property owner to go over the plans physically walking in that that would be kind of sufficient without having to go through the case of doing an entire title search of the property. So it wouldn't be, a, um, that's what I would like to just um, double check. Like it, a title commitment does not cost a lot and it would give us I, something to really re be able to rely on. And I would argue that the owner uh, would want that anyway. I mean, and, and if they're gonna, they may not have a mortgage, but if they're gonna have a mortgage, they're gonna, it's going to be required, so it's just simply why would a, a getting a title us a copy search, of what they otherwise would have to do. Why would a title search on a town road be of any value? No, it would be not us. I would say the owner of the property, the, the son, would have his own title search, which presumably On his property done. or on this road? On his property. Well, that's what he asked. He, he asked for Sweeney to do that, and this is what he proposed. So. Right. And that, and that usually what the title policy will say is, you know, you own fee simple title to this, subject to these things, and together with a right of way over X, Y, and Z. So the title company is, is standing up for that proposition, that they, they have looked at that, and yes, you do have a right. And then it kind of it doesn't put us in a situation where we may specific. not be legally comfortable with supporting that. That's all. But, I mean, but the attorney, the attorney specifically says, we searched the title of your property and we searched Old Sachem's Head Road. We found nothing that would prohibit you from using Old Sachem's Head Road. Right. Yeah. yeah and he says well, it's considered a town road and should be retained. He's as only such asking for use of a town road. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's not, right he's not away. asking for any ownership, so I don't no, understand no the ownership. title argument. 
I, you know, I would issue a permit if, with your approval. I would issue them a permit to, do, you know, do the improvements within the public right of way sure. in this case. And um, and there, there is a note on the plan that, <clears throat> you know, they would be responsible for maintenance, and I would make that a condition of the permit as well. Okay. Any further uh, discussion or questions? All right. Um, call the question. Um, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I was actually I was trying to look at it with a Google mm -hmm. search here, and I can't. Old Sage Road is looks like a long a road. road. I feel like yeah. I've been on it. I, thank you. I have. And well, this is, a road. this is a section that is um, it runs parallel you to the Sage. Yeah. I can look it up. Yeah, I would love to see a map. Yeah, it's, it's an un, you don't know it's a road because it looks like a driveway from Leeds Island Road and it comes down to. Um, I think it sends a flag it for me is the sentence where it says construction of driveway. Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is Sachem's Head Road, okay, which is what you drive on when you go down to Sachem's Head at mm -hmm. the, the yeah. three-way intersection there. Right. Right. Okay, this is this is the lot here that they now own. It used to be owned by King's Field. Okay. This is old Sachem's Head Road, and this is an unimproved section of Sachem's Head Road. As you get further down Sachem's Head Road to the three-way mm -hmm. stop, you then pick it up connects. an improved section of old okay. Sachem's Head makes Road. Sense. This Old Sachem's Head Road, which is not improved, runs behind the lots that front along Sachem's Head Road. And it's not improved, so you don't know it's there visually. Mm -hmm. The only indication you see it being here really is, is there's a driveway here on Leeds Island Road, which is currently in existence, which will be what is extended to then provide access to this lot here. So it's really going to just look like the same it does now because there's already a driveway there and they're just going to extend that driveway to here within the right of way of what is Old Sachem's Head Road in the section from where the improved section of Old Sachem's Head ends at that three way intersection mm -hmm. pretty much. That makes sense. Up to Leeds Island Road. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know okay. I can so currently there's a house here. That's 65? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to tear it down. And they have their. And the address 65, Sachem Head Road or Old Sachem? Yeah, that's the part that's confusing me. Is it Sachem Head Road? Head Road. Mm -hmm. This is the proposal for the driveway where this is Leeds Island Road and this is the extension into there. And then this is what the lot looks like. So you would have. Sachem's Head Road. Now, these, this lot went through planning and zoning and wetlands approvals, okay, because it's in the CAM area for planning and zoning, and there's, tight, there's inland wetlands as well that they had. So this is where the existing house is with the existing driveway to Sachem's Head Road. Okay, they're going to they're gonna abandon this, or they're demolishing this old house, and they're building a new house up here on the knoll. And rather than try and traverse this steepness up and through the wetlands and everything to get to here, they wanted to provide the access off of the unimproved sections of Old Sachem's Head Road with just a driveway extension. <coughs> okay, that's very helpful, at least. Yeah, the context of yeah, it all. Yeah, right. makes sense. Got it. <coughs> so that is my hesitation. So by construction of driveway, is it, I mean, you're not going to make a roadway. No, it's going to be a 12-foot wide driveway. Um, it's likely to stay gravel. The first section where it exists already an intersection with Leeds Island Road is paved. Um, they can pave it if they decide to, but um, it's been graded off to address some drainage concerns, and um, they will maintain it and plow it as a driveway within the right of way of the town's you know right away mm -hmm. if for some reason the town wants to build a road through there then they would still have their access it would just be shortened as a driveway right on into their lot and the road would replace the driveway so in addition to this a3 road that, that, that currently exists in some fashion and we have some right-of-way uh, 
control over. Mm -hmm. there, there's going to be a, a driveway, an actual driveway on their property exclusively that goes up to this. Oh, yeah. Okay, but there are, so there, it's in order to get to their property, rather than coming in off of Sagem's Head, they're going to come in off of this old Sagem's Head. Right. And it's not going to cost the town anything. No. It's not going to change our use or ability to use the property no. in any way. No. The we don't. We don't. We don't give up any. And right. if, they, giving anything if they up. have an accident on the unimproved road, we're not any more liable than anybody having an accident on any town road. Yeah. yeah. Right, and it's less likely because it's really yeah. a driveway. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't. Okay. Unless Pam's got some okay. overriding legal reason. Maybe I'm just extra anxious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're tired. you know, you're I did tired. ask the prop I did ask the property and do a, a title search, and yeah, you know, that's that's the letter he provided yeah. okay. from his attorney. Yeah. Okay. In the absence of being able to articulate a well-formulated <laughs> rationale, we're going to move forward with this. Thing. I know. It's <laughs> yeah, she's she's spent. Um, all right, is there a motion to approve the construction of the driver within the right of way of Old Six from Seven Road? Uh, oh, no, no, no. To approve, okay, to, to approve. approve the control. Right. We're not the construction. We're not, we're not constructing. Approved. Yeah. <laughs> by, by the applicant. <laughs> right. No cost to the town, no change in our <laughs> rights. Mm -hmm. You got all deep. You want to put that in motion? No. No. <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm understanding what we're voting on. The motion is what yeah. it is. I don't want to complicate it. it. All right, is there a second on the motion? I guess I'll say You might as well. <laughs> Call the question all in favor. Uh, Aye. Right. Opposed, abstain, you know, abstention, recusals, hearing none, motion carries. One last thing, Janice, uh, at, uh, at the conclusion of our meeting last uh, two weeks ago, uh, we had a brief discussion about 52 uh, uh, Church Street, mm -hmm. and I uh, indicated that we'd get uh, some update. I knew that there was some progress. We, we mentioned that we've had some conversations mm -hmm. with the Historic uh, District com uh, Commission. Uh, you have started on some preliminary designs, but just want to give us an update uh, right. where we are. So um, I, I have done a sketch layout of some potential parking. Um, mm -hmm. There's been discussions of kind of looking at it both from just parking or inclusion of potential uh, build, small building there. Um, so really to get to that level of detail to know what's going to work, um, uh, I need a survey, to, uh, you know, survey quality um, map to work from. So I have reached out to get proposals for um, survey, which I just received some. Uh, it took a while for them to get back to me, unfortunately. Yeah. So. What was the small, small building? Small building? There has been discussions with the facilities task force whether consideration whether a building would fit on that lot in conjunction with the parking. So um, we're going to look at you know alternatives to see really what the what the space can hold, can really provide. And that would ultimately come before this board. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What do we consider a small building? Twenty by There's 30. been a few discussions, but <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think we were talking. Yet. If it, if anything, it sure. might be like about um, a, a thousand foot, thousand square foot footprint. So maybe with the one two story? stories, yeah. or right. or you could go to two stories. Okay, because I struggle with you're going to run into historic and, and everything else, and you know if there's some great use for it fine but that's an expensive place to build a building no, and I agree yeah. there's some challenges yeah. um, but we want to explore the different options to understand the potentials um, mm -hmm. talking with the historic district I think there's concern of either re retention of the existing building and some streetscape yeah. and the, what the streetscape is going to look look like without a building there so it's really to kind of explore the different options and, and you know yeah, that, I, 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 I I, I bet have, you that would be a real struggle to build a building from scratch. There. Yeah, my concerns. Be. My concerns there is whether the site could really not only um, curb cuts and it, everything. It, you know, and what do you gain? Support the one building, yeah. but it's going to use some of the parking that you're trying to gain for right. the community right. center. But the bigger challenge there is stormwater um, management and, and having another septic system that's going to be needed for that building, and whether that's really going to play yeah, out. Yeah, you'd so have to have a great need. You know, to, yeah. to go through the process yeah. of trying to build a building. We're just, we just want to look at a couple All alternatives. Of a square feet. Mm -hmm. right. Well, yeah, and is it a thousand square feet of storage? If you're talking septic, then it's another whole yeah. ball game. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, you, you'll bring this all to us, but you'll, 
you'll be able to say number of parking spaces in a full lot versus number of parking spaces with right. a building. Or right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just Good. to give. Yeah. Options. Right. And consider to consider. And the street streetscape, obviously, is going to be very important. Yes. Absolutely. absolutely. We we did meet with the we met with the chairman of the uh, the commission, and uh, he has indicated a willingness to work with us. He understands the constraints we have and the, and the need, and I understand that change is inevitable in a community like this, uh, but it needs to be done in a fashion that is consistent with. Oh, I could. I mean, that could be a great little park area. Right. You, know, you got the kiosk on one side of the community center. You put a little park with some right. benches. You know, just. 10 feet wide or something. And, and Janice has promised me uh, bioswales, bioswales <laughs> and uh, rain gardens over there, too. Splash pad. <laughs> 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 Nicely done. We might have trouble with we'll, we'll the storm on that one. The stormwater problems with the splash pad over there. <laughs> yeah, but they get a fun <laughs> camp, campaign has to follow here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Janice, for that. Oh, yeah, so we were. Uh, I had just actually asked uh, Gary if he had the money to pay for the survey. I was looking at about $2,600 to get the survey done. And that, in that includes not just the lot itself. It's an A2T2 of the existing What did he 52. say when you asked him? The Gilbert Facilities Task Force would endorse the payment out of the funds allocated to us by even more Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much for that so, offer. Uh, that time so camera. You're looking that's at the <laughs> existing land that the community center is sitting on now. Just, with that survey? Just about 30 feet into it because we, we need to tie in. But with the north side of the parking lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yes. this, yeah. Cause yeah. we have to do yeah. a tie in from right. the community right. center right. into right. that lot. Right. So we need some information right. on what's existing on the community yeah. center lot right. to a point right. at least. Right. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Good. Okay. All right. Thank um, you. So we'll, we'll handle the money. Yep. We'll Thanks. Figure a way to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item nine. This afternoon meeting's a killer, right? <laughs> this is, this is this, I need coffee. <laughs> you want a break? You want a cup no, of coffee? No. It's all right. No, it's all sure? right. Sure? No, it's all right. Uh, note 9. Director of Human Resources, Mitch Goldblatt, 9.1, discuss to take possible action on a third amendment of the town of Guilford Employees Pension Plan effective July 1, 2019, as recommended by the Pension Committee. Mitch, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, about two months ago, you approved amendment number two to the Town of Guilford Employees Pension Plan, which took care of a lot of uh, routine measures, if you will, fixing up the, uh, the plan. There were two measures that were looked at as being more substantive, and uh, they're before you right now. I'll take the easy one first, which is number two on this, which is the um, just replacing the term Pension Committee with Director of Human Resources as authorized by Pension Committee. That's to take care of the uh, administration of the pension plan on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. the, the old language just said the pension committee does it, but yeah. the reality it goes through they my can. office. Yeah. Was that? They don't do it. They don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the the more the more uh, significant measure here is the allowance of a death benefit for someone who has left the town employee employment but had not yet started to collect a pension. Um, this was. For some reason, not included in the uh, the restatement of the plan back in 2013, uh, it was recognized as something that should be picked up at some point. And indeed, unfortunately, we had a situation this past year where someone met that exact uh, circumstance. Uh, they had retired from the town of Guilford, had completed at least 10 years of service, passed away, and we had no provision within the pension plan to pay out a spousal benefit. This would rectify that situation retroactively to July 1st, 2019 to take care of that situation and to move forward if there's any other situation that were to occur uh, similar in the future. We looked into this very extensively. There have been no other past situations that fell into this, so there's no one else that would fall into it except the one I just mentioned. This was brought before the Pension Committee on January 8th. Um, and was uh, adopted or approved with the understanding that the approval meant that it's brought to this body for full approval uh, and sign off as you have done other amendments. Next question in terms of uh, impact to overall funding uh, of the plan Especially itself. Well, it's, not, uh, the, it's only know, one. It's only one. Budget. Yeah, the, o the overall impact was negligible. Um, it was. I, I forget it by thousands, a couple thousand dollars a year, yeah. if, if that, uh, into the entire impact of the 
of the pension plan, which, as you know, is, is, is several hundred thousand dollars for the town plan every year. Um, so it was, it was a minimal impact. Uh, the numbers have been put together, which I don't have for me for that individual. It's, it's really minor. Uh, but it is, it is significant to that family. So. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that the reason why it says uh, made this 21, first day of January 2020, effective July 1, 2019, which is yep. a question, but I understand now. But do you think in the wording it should say retroactively? Because it does. It, it, it does. In the third paragraph it says well, where right is it? Well, right up here it doesn't, though. It just says this 21st day effective. I, it looks like a typo. It looks like it's supposed to be effective July 2020. So I just wondered if it should ha say retroactively effective. I don't know. Maybe. I say, that was put together by by the... Uh, uh, I'm talking right under I know what you're number saying. three, and at the, then at the very second, at the very top the very it says top. effective July 1, 2019. In the body, it does say whereas the employer desires to amend the plan retroactively to July 1, 2019. That's consistent language with how the others were done as well. Okay. I believe I can check yeah, that real quick. That's okay. yeah. All right. All right. Normal way of that. Yeah, it's consistent what we did with some others. And I'm looking at Amendment Two and Amendment One also. Well, Surprise! Something like okay. this I'm, wasn't I'm, already in there. <laughs> that's exactly. Just, that's exactly well, what, what everybody says. Our, that's what everybody our says. consultants yeah. also. Yeah, just but no one ever like thought it was It's in the private sector. <coughs> yeah, it's in private sector plans and mm -hmm. in most municipal plans. Yeah, plans. yeah we did. Yeah. It's just the right mm -hmm. thing to do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm moving. Second. Mm -hmm. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. Recuse. This hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, 9.2, consider to take possible action on the revised, revised, revised motor vehicle uh, oh, policy. I'm trying to get through this. When you last passed this, <laughs> uh, there was some concern, uh, especially from the police and fire departments, that um, uh, we made the police and fire, the last time we approved this, you approved it, we made the police and fire departments exempt, but as yeah. it turns out in discussion with them, uh, yes, that is true for sworn officers and sworn firefighters, oh, but not necessarily for the for the uh, civilian that staff. Makes sense. Yeah. Sure. So we made that change. In the meantime, uh, Pam had some concerns about some of the language as well. In, as we as we delved into it with the police chief and fire chief, so we had a meeting uh, with the police chief, the fire chief, as well as of course sure. Pam, and and as well as our consultant uh, Nancy Cosgrove from Seeger. Here we went through a number of issues on this this proposal, including uh, the fact that it was determined that you know we talk about mileage reimbursements and mileage allowances that is covered under a separate policy, so we removed that from this policy. We also took the specific um, coverages for insurance and looked at that as saying you know what we should only just be requiring the state minimum from our employees, so we changed that to reflect that as well. And then the idea that an employee is, is um, uh, responsible under their own personal insurance, we felt would be better handled, not in the policy so much, but more of a, from a statement that might, might go along with this policy to, to the employees from the first selectman to reiterate, to, to make sure that's in, that, that employees understand that, but it wasn't felt it was necessarily make it a policy per se. And this was from the... Yeah. Policy. Policy is a fact. So this was from the input from going through this again with, with uh, Council uh, Millman as well as our insurance consultant um, that brought us to today's change. We do have change. some paperwork either in the beginning or whatever that the employee signs off that they have been told and have the insurance? No, we do not. And that's why we're going to make that clear in an email from, from Matt and also we'll make that part of the employee orientation policy. That, that, that statement would then become not only would all part existing the, employees get that. Part of employment. Right. Yep. And we would make Additional that, employment. you know, initial employment, okay. make that clear to people uh, in that and respect. There, and there's no way to confirm it of the existing employees easily. I mean, you got to deal with that now. No, but it, it's, it's a rare occurrence. We had it happen, obviously. That's what brought yeah. this all to light. But I think it's... Uh, yeah. You know, it's been handled the way it's supposed to be handled, that the, the accident situation follows the vehicle. If the vehicle is a personal vehicle, that's where it's going to follow. Yeah, but from the classic law of unintended consequences, the original idea for 
uh, relooking this policy was to ensure that our employees knew the risk that they had when they took their own vehicle out for company business, mm -hmm. and this turned into quite a different <laughs> exercise. Uh, so, so we we sort of broken out. And and Charlie, I, I I had the same question. How do we know for sure if somebody's got the automobile insurance? Well, we'll know when they get in an accident. Uh, and, well, I just you and, know. And, and, Making it go going for it, making right. it part of employment. It is. You know, it's you one of the policies you sign off that you read and you acknowledge. Yeah. That's exactly it. So, good. Yeah. So new. All right. Is there a motion to approve this uh, revised version? So moved. Second. second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recuses? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Thank you. Yeah. you. Sure, you don't want to take another look at it? No, I would rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, item 10, consider take possible action on resolution of endorsement regarding the South Central Regional Council of Governments Regional Performance Incentive Program, proposals regarding Regional Cybersecurity Initiative and School Waste Diversion Pilot Program. This is a uh, the routine the state makes uh, the various COG organizations go through in order to get set aside funding that uh, the legislature has put in place for programs like this. And as you recall earlier, might have been yesterday by the time we get done with this meeting, um, <laughs> Um, when I talked about the food waste diversion mm -hmm. program, this That's is the this. specific funding, uh, and, and this application releases that funding. So, um, I would uh, I would move that um, we endorse uh, the resolution. Second. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Recuses. Hearing none. Motion carries. Um, item 11: uh, appointments and resignations. One, act on a resignation received from Fran Peranto. Um, I'll make you, yeah, I know you will. And, and, and thanks for his years of service. Service. Uh, and may I, I'll second that. Um, call the question. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recuses? Hearing none. Motion carries. Item two, act on resignation received from Scott Morenstein from the Standing Building Committee. I will make that with great appreciation mm -hmm. uh yeah. there were times where scott was I mean, he might have been the only guy at the meeting um, when they were down to, to, to two or three in that on that committee so mm -hmm. scott thank you very much call the question all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed abstain recusals hearing none motion carries uh, item three act on a recommendation to appoint john della ventura to the land acquisition commission as the board of education representative for a term to expire november 7 2023 gary you sucked in you got i mean you got another uh, volunteer huh John Delventura. John Delventura on the land acquisition. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. And second. 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 Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Recusals. Hearing none. Uh, item twelve. Charlie. Okay. Speaking of Gary, I'd like to uh, <laughs> initiate his motion to approve. There's too many to list this week. I think. Well, I'll go through them quickly. All right. Uh, <laughs> Uh, request for use of town property to put a sign up by the Boy Scouts for their strawberry social uh, June 7th 2020 uh, placement May 24th uh, why are there two because there's also use, use of the property use of the green. oh use yeah. in the sign okay well I guess it's the same thing for Leeds Island Garden Club then uh, a sign yeah. and use uh, May 9th uh, the Girl Scouts uh, sign their pasta dinner for February 7th. Uh, Park and Rec uh, to use the green for their uh, egg extravaganza. Uh, That's how you know spring here. And again for <laughs> Park and Rec for sign and use for their Sunday concerts July 26th, August 9th, August 16th, 23rd, and 30th. Mark your calendars, <laughs> uh, and that's it. I have a second all those. Uh, call the call oh, question. Okay, yeah. Call in favor. Yes, I. Call the question. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank you, Charlie, for that. Okay. Reader's Digest version. Uh, Thirteen committee reports. So, well, Sandy, yours is uh, pretty self-evident. Yep. Uh, Lou, anything? I, you know, I've been in touch with the fire chief, and and in terms of the uh, fire marshals. Um, um, Billing, they, yep. they, he does have a proposal. It's going to be very similar to what they had before. Right. I mean, I think he cleaned up the language. He got in touch with Town Hall South. They had some meetings, okay. um, and they're going to present us something uh, soon. But I have to stop in and see him and just make sure Good. that path. And I'll coordinate with you. 
Right. That should be coming over from them soon. Good. And Dennis, anything on? Not, not, not as much right. there. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, correspondence. Um, public Works report. Anything on that? Building Department report. Anything on that? Letter from uh, B. Cronset on the golf course. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of letters on the golf course. You're going to see a lot of those coming mm -hmm. across. Uh, oh, I know okay. the activists are out. Yeah, there you go. So I. Uh, the same I'm, ones I'm that were against the sidewalks. <laughs> Yeah. So there was, let me just, can I just comment on that though? I yeah. mean, I think there was some question if there was like an immediate threat of the golf course closing down. Right. I mean, I heard a couple of questions to that effect, right. and I said, no, we're just discussing the expenses. It's been an ongoing and process, and it's a concern to everybody and uh, appropriately raised by members of this board. Um, so the cost and the ongoing sort of deficit is an issue and a matter of concern. And the management of it. And the management. I agree with all that. But doesn't mean if the golf course is going to be shutting down anytime. Uh, we'll we'll find a way to make well, it we, work. We've asked to see and a this, plan. This that's letter, all. Um, Agreed completely. So that just wasn't clear. I shouldn't yeah. say this person's name. You don't say the person who sent the letter. Is that... I don't want to say right. it. Public information. Just public information. Agenda. Agenda. Anyway, this letter is just asking, this, this uh, citizen is just asking questions and is it totally in support of the golf course. And one of the points that he makes, which has been made by other people, and I agree too, many town fu um, services are mm -hmm. not com funded back through fees. They're supported by fees, but he's just saying, you know, he, he's feeling that the golf course is being picked on. And I, it, it is not being picked on, but um, I, I like that he made the point that we have he said you know how about cost of beaches baseball fields soccer fields tennis court library right. community center mm -hmm. bittner park you know so i just wanted to share his point of view because i think a lot of people question that we're not trying to make the golf course uh, a hundred percent uh, we just, no. just want to hear the proposal uh, right we're just proposal. looking and at certain right. budgetary concerns yeah and understand yeah. how the public does use it you know we know yeah. how the beach is used we see it we see all the kids on the ball fields we don't know right. the right. statistics right. for the golf course that's right. all Great. So. Great. well we used to get reports i mean back a few years we'd get i don't know quarterly or whatever updates of, of what's been going on and that, okay. we still have those we still have access to those Nothing I've ever provided or seen. So no, you speak from them. I, I'm not. Was, I'm just saying I'm not from. If you go, if you go back, go back maybe three years. Three years. The Board of Finance used to get a uh, in their monthly packet. They got an update on the golf course, uh, which used to actually had a spreadsheet that showed the uh, number of rounds played, all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know whether we're still track. They're still tracking it that way. And I don't even know yeah. if that's it's it. it's just that you know we, we've been warned a couple of times of an increased loss, yeah. and it's been ongoing question. And I just think it's worth right. uh, getting up to speed on where they're going. And that is and, and I, there's been a significant amount of activity uh, of late uh, with that task force that I put together, uh, yeah. Brian McGlone. Um, and Chris Hodgson from the and, and the golf course committee and, and Rick was actually part of some of those conversations, but the, it engendered uh, uh, some significant um, considerations on management, how to raise fees, how to cut costs. Yeah, sure you're going to see you're going to see a revised document uh, probably either either tomorrow either tomorrow or Thursday, one of the two, right? Correct. There's been a tremendous amount of work done um, with the golf course on their budget and on their management, on their fees, you know, Mitch and I have exactly met with them more wanted. than once, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and, and they've had their own meetings, so they are trying to do all they can to, you know, provide you the best information they have. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Great. Terrific. All right. Uh, old business. New business. Public forum. Um, item 18. Discuss and take possible action on a request from an employee for accumulated sick time. Uh, and we're going to couple that with 19. Consider and take possible action on possible purchase of property. Executive session will be required for both of those. Um, so for um, the uh, uh, item 18, Mitch, uh, I'd like you to say, Mary Jane, you're welcome to. Sure. Okay. Um, and then under 19, uh, it'll be Kevin McGee and Gary McKelney. So uh, we'll, we'll come back, Mike, uh, to close it. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
opposed, abstain, recusals, hearing none. Motion carries. How about a health break before? Uh... So motion come out of executive session. Motion. Second. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, recusals, hearing none. Motion carries. Uh, in executive session, we covered uh, two items. Item 18, while there was discussion, there were no motions made, no action taken. On item 19, uh, there was uh, a motion and action taken, and that action was to authorize uh, Land Acquisition uh, Committee in the person of Gary McKelney to negotiate with the owners of the identified uh, property. Uh, and that negotiation was to take place uh, within the price ranges uh, discussed uh, and uh, voted upon by this board. Second. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Recusals? Hearing none. Motion carries. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. And a second. Second. See y'all. Uh, all right. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye